Hello and welcome to this video. My name's Barry Beckham. How about a short story where the moral is not to make hasty judgments before you have any evidence to do so? Are you a photographer who thinks drones are kids' toys that you wouldn't want to own in a million years? Especially with all that negative publicity about them. Just admitting that you have one seems to label you as some sort of potential terrorist or peeping Tom. Now I'm a fairly traditional photographer and I'm keen on quality photography. I'm motivated to produce images that have impact, appeal, and that means I want to use a high-end SLR. Who wants to use a drone when you have a Canon 5D Mark IV? When drones started to hit the photographic scene, I had no interest in them whatsoever. I was already in my late 60s, so what on earth would I do with a drone? Especially with all that negativity that surrounded them. More trouble than their worth came to mind. I didn't have the time or the inclination to learn how to fly a drone. I thought that was for kids. But in 2018, my son, who's not a photographer, or a kid anymore come to that, came to Australia for an extended stay of three months, and he brought with him a Mavic drone. As soon as I saw the drone in action, I was a little embarrassed that I'd formed such a negative view of them without any evidence at all. I'd clearly allowed the media hype to affect my judgement, but it was impossible not to see the photographic potential right away. We already know that a slightly different viewpoint can massively change the composition of a photograph. Raising a camera six feet higher or lower is often all we need. After a few days of watching the drone, I convinced my son to shoot some raw images for me, and I started working on one or two of them in Adobe Camera Raw. The different viewpoint that the drone allows makes an enormous difference to the appeal of the images. So I started to take my son and his drone to the right place at the right time for photography. I chose good locations and the best light, usually morning or evenings. You don't always have to fly the drone a long way away to capture the shots. And very often just raising the drone above the tree line can be enough to open up a scene you couldn't get in any other way. So let's get back to flying a drone. Well, actually, they fly themselves. But I didn't realise that when I made my original assumptions. Now I do have a little bit of a laugh when I hear someone say they're a drone pilot. All we need to do is press one button and the drone will rise up and hover about three feet off the ground fully automatically. There's two toggles on the handset which control the drone movement. Left, right, up, down, rotate left, rotate right, and forward and backward flight. There, I've just completed your training. You're now a drone pilot. If you remove your fingers from the toggles at any time in flight, the drone instantly stops and just hovers. It's all much easier than most people perceive. The shutter button is on the top right of the controller, just where you'd expect it to be on any camera. So within minutes you can be shooting images or video, and boy does the landscape change being just 30 feet up let alone 400 feet, which is the maximum height. The drone even controls that for you too, telling you when you've reached maximum altitude and it stops the ascent for you. So in the space of just a few days, I went from someone who would say, never a drone in a million years, to I want one of those. You'll need a smartphone, of course, but there are free apps that tell you where you're allowed to fly and all you need to know to stay within the law. To be honest, you'd have to be a complete moron to get any of this wrong. 
There's a free app that connects your drone to the phone so you can see exactly what your drone is looking at. You shouldn't really fly the drone out of your sight, but it can happen sometimes. It's not difficult to lose sight of the drone temporarily against the blue sky or a bank of trees. Now if your drone does get out of sight, you can press the home button on the controller and the drone automatically comes back to its home point, the point where it lifted off from. GPS does all the hard work for us and it works a treat and I know because it's one of the very first things I tested. People who get themselves into difficulty with drones and crash them or make themselves a nuisance with them are generally those who are more into the flying of the drone, not the photography. Photographers are not into the flying at all. It's just a means to an end for us. It's just a platform to provide a different viewpoint. If you want to shoot video from a moving drone, you can switch to what's called tripod mode. This dampens and slows down the speed of all the drone's movements. So it becomes slow and measured and the video looks great. Personally, I am more into stills photography and one of the appeals for me is that I can set up automatic exposure bracketing, three shots taken with one button press, just like my SLR. And I can shoot raw images with a 20 megapixel sensor. My generation, the older generation, are probably best suited to drone photography. We're not chances, we respect other people's privacy, and financially, we're probably better able to acquire a drone. A drone in its use is a lot safer in our hands too. So my message is, take a look at this technology if you're a photographer. It's worth a look if nothing else. And don't write it off as I did without just calls. I'll link below to a couple of my YouTube presentations that feature drone images. But I'll also link to my galleries where you'll find other images too. Remember that although we talk a lot about height in relation to drones for obvious reasons, that's not the be all and end all. Quite often we can shoot with a drone just six feet high, but maybe in a place we couldn't easily get to, maybe over the ocean for example. If you have any other questions about drones or any other photographic topic, why not come along to our forum at the address on screen? There's also a contact link at the bottom of my homepage on the website. I'll see you next time.